Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagrevich and I am being joined by Reverend Albert Ramirez. Before we go any further, please take a quick second or two to press that little button that says share so that your friends, your loved ones will be able to join us as we pray for the nations today and for your knees. And we do have praise reports as well as needs from around the world. And we're going to be lifting them up before the Lord. Uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, uh, broadcast. And uh, please, please share this broadcast. There are many needs out there and we need more people joining with us in prayer. And I wanna thank those who pray with us. Uh, there are prayer groups that unite with us during this broadcast and they are praying for your needs. They're praying for God's intervention even as we are on here on the air. Welcome, Brother Albert. Would you greet the people? Yes. Hello, everyone. It's good to meet with you. <clears throat> it's always great to get together with the rest of the body of Christ to uh, exercise our faith uh, together, to exercise, to release our love and our share, share our love and care for one another and our circumstances and our trials that we go through that we should always count it all joy. <laughs> the Word of God says it doesn't always feel joyful to go through trials and testings, but we all do. And, uh, but the thing is what, what, what happens when we go through testing and trials is God expects us to, to use what he's given us, which is his spirit and the, and the manifestation of, uh, of the power and uh, authority of his spirit through Christ, uh, to, to overcome every circumstance, overcome every test or every trial. Uh, and God expects us to use that authority. So, that's that's I, I appreciate uh, ministering here on with you and praying with you on Thursdays, and I, I I always love it and I appreciate it because it's a time to get together to share and to release uh, the power of the the Spirit of God through love through His authority through His dominion uh, and everything that God has given us. It's just important to to realize that when we're tested and tried, we need to do something. We, when we're testing and tried, you don't just sit there and, and moan and groan about it. You know, you, uh, you, you get up and you use the word of God and you, you do something about it. You exercise your faith and do something about it and use the weapons of the warfare that God has given us. And also we manifest God's presence and, and God's authority in this world. Amen. Amen. And uh, it is always a uh, an honor and a pleasure to have you here on the broadcast. Thank you, Brother Albert. And we look forward to, uh, to having you here on Thursdays. And we want to hear what God uh, has to say to us and to the body of Jesus Christ uh, through you. And uh, for those of you that do not know Brother Albert, he is a prophet. He is a minister of God. He is also an evangelist. He has a conference speaker and Bible teacher. Uh, he has ministered in a number of countries of the world. I've known him for a number of years, and I can attest to the accuracy of the prophetic words that uh, have been spoken through Brother Albert and their confirmation. And uh, it is a joy and an honor to have you on here, Brother Albert, uh, today. And um, I just want to thank all of those who are standing with us in prayer. And I want to let you know that God is answering prayer. We saw Brother John, whom we had been praying for. <laughs> here on the broadcast last night. We had dinner with him and his uh, wonderful wife. And <laughs> Nina and I were just amazed at uh, how well he looked. I mean, uh, it, you would never have known that he had gone through what he had gone through. And so God has touched him, uh, but he still needs healing in those feet. Doctors cannot figure out, and he's gone to so many of them, what's going on with those feet. Uh, they are better, but he needs a miracle of God. Uh, but we've heard from others that we have been praying for. Uh, we've been praying for uh, uh, 
uh, Mike and uh, Laura, and they are doing well. Marcy, we talked to Sister Marcy, and uh, she is so much better, almost 100% already, as her husband as well. Um, and uh, she also reported to us that her sister Hazel in Canada has greatly improved. So we praise God for praise that. Uh, um, we had uh, prayed for some other uh, ones as well. I may not mention all of them. Sister Olga Bilmutis as well, and she is uh, much better. Uh, so we are thankful. Thankful to God. We know Brother Harley Fiddler's better, but his wife still needs a miracle of God. So we're praying for her. What I'm saying is that God is answering prayer. And uh, we hear of the needs, and we often mention needs, and we pray for needs, but we don't always know what happened afterwards. And I think it's very encouraging to hear um, of how uh, and see how God is answering prayer. And so we continue to pray. There are people with needs. And Brother Albert, in the last few days, we have been emphasizing prayer for Ukraine, and we will do that in this broadcast uh, we will pray uh, for Ukraine and that whole situation there. We also uh, got in uh, a prayer request from uh, our friend, Brother Schultz, uh, who is a missionary in Honduras. And today they're inaugurating a new president there. And um, unfortunately, um, there it's a big move towards socialism again with uh, problems that uh, uh, would take a while to explain. And so um, we, we want to pray for Honduras uh, today, as well as we continue to pray for Cuba, for the church in that nation, the church in other nations of the world, such as China. And of course, we're praying for Ukraine. But um, Brother Albert, I just wanted to throw that in uh, before we get further, because I wanted to encourage people. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, it seems like we're in in battle, in battle, in in prayer. But when you see the results, when you hear the results, when people write in uh, some of the results, it is just amazing that uh, um, uh, that those things. Um, um, uh, they're so it's so encouraging, you know. Like uh, seeing Brother John, I haven't seen him that uh, well in, in 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 a long time, and just uh, just the, the the power of God. I mean, doctors had helped him, worked on him, but some had also not done the best on him. But God has uh, intervened. God has intervened, and. Uh, uh, it is just wonderful. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, praise the Lord uh, together with you because you, I know you've been praying with us and others have been praying for us. We've been agreeing and here are some of the results. And these are not all. There are others also who have uh, we have prayed for who are doing well. And uh, uh, this week has been a very interesting week. On Monday, we had a pastor uh, from uh, Sweden and we prayed. He's, he's leading a prayer movement in Sweden for revival in Sweden amongst the Pentecostal churches in Sweden, and they're lifting up 24-7 um, uh, prayer. Uh, they're trying to do it seven days a week so far. It's um, it's like three and a half days of the week that they've got covered, but they've got continual prayer. They're praying for revival. So we prayed for Sweden. We prayed for Europe. We prayed for Ukraine. On Tuesday, we had Bishop Vasily from uh, Ukraine. We had a Russian broadcast, and then we had an English broadcast with translation. Uh, yesterday, we had the Abrams powerful broadcast. And today, Brother Albert, we're so happy that you are on here. Um, and, and please, as the Lord leads you, would you just uh, open up and share or pray what, whatever God uh, has given uh, you for us today? Just, just uh, what, you know, just meditating on the word this morning, just, uh, just knowing that the Holy Spirit is our helper. Um, you know, when we when we read that in the scripture, in the gospel of John, that the Holy Spirit is our helper, that means that we're doing something and he's helping us. You know, he doesn't, uh, he gives us things as, as we're, if, if we're in a relationship and communication with the Holy Spirit through praying in the spirit or, or prayer, you know, even praying with our own understanding, he is revealing things to us and he's, he's helping us or at least he's attempting to help us. A lot of times the word of God says that we quench the spirit, you know, and it tells us, it exhorts us not to quench the spirit, you know, in first Thessalonians 5, 19. And it, it also says that we can uh, um, uh, grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, uh, it talks about that in, in, in uh, Ephesians 4, 30. 
we can limit him uh, like Peter told the, the the Pharisees in the book of Acts he said you do always resist the Holy Ghost so I mean you know he's the Godhead and he is he is the divine nature that God has given us, given to us and, and and I think we sometimes need to stop and think that we are the habitat it says in Ephesians 2 24 we are the habitation of God I mean God comes to dwell and that is the greatest thing that happened uh in during the um when and the day of Pentecost was that God's nature God himself came to to live in man in you and I and that divine nature it's not all it's not just about uh you know the gifts of the spirit it's not just you know the power manifestation of the spirit but it's God's nature it's his divine nature that's come to live and dwell in each one of us and with God if we stop and can think about that that God's nature is within us and, and, and think about Christ. He had, as a, as a man of man also, baptized with the Holy Ghost, just like you and I, he had the, the Holy Spirit in him. And think about what he did and things that he did, uh, not just the manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit, but, but the love that manifested, the authority that manifested over the enemy, uh, also the, uh, the ex- the exhortation, you know, that, that manifest through me, you know, when he went into the temple and, and told them that, that, that God, the temple was supposed to be a pr- place for God and for prayer. And, you know, he, he said it was not, it was the house of prayer. It wasn't supposed to be for selling goods and things like that. And, and I, I get uh, kind of discouraged sometimes when you see too much people uh, in the body of Christ or uh, the leaders of the church asking for money and things like that. And I know it takes money. Don't misunderstand me. It takes money to do this, to do the ministry, but but when people go overboard, you know, and Christ was upset with that. He went in with a whip, <laughs> turned over money, money changers, tables and stuff. That was still the spirit of God moving in him. So, I mean, what my point is, is that the spirit of the living God, God's nature, we are partakers, it says in Second Peter chapter one, of the divine nature of God, God's spirit. That is the thing when, when someone comes when you look at another person, another Christian, you look at it, what do you look for? You don't look to see if there's, some people do, they look to see if the manifestation of the power, things like that, but you look to see if God's in that person, and God should be in every one of us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit and manifesting uh, all of the attributes of God, his authority, his dominion, his power, uh, and, and you know, in, in according to, to uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, do, uh, against the Antichrist, against the Antichrist through individuals who have yielded themselves to Antichrist, we have the authority and the dominion to stand against it. And especially as the body of Christ, being that we are the temple of, of, of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says that, but uh, we are the body of Christ. So it's important for us to, to, to recognize, to acknowledge that, to believe that. First and foremost, we're not helpless. We have the Holy Spirit helping us, especially like in, in circumstances like what's happening in Ukraine. You know, we are we are uh, the body of Christ, and if the body of Christ gets together and prays together, we can have do uh, we can have the manifestation that Jehoshaphat had in in Second Chronicles twenty. You know, they 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 had what was what's happening against Ukraine. They had armies surrounded them, came against them. They, the Ammonites, you know, and the Moabites came against them. They were, they, and the, the people from Mount Seir, they came against the Israelites, but they were, uh, they, they sought God. They fasted. They feared. They feared. They were a little trembling. There was a little trembling there. there it said Jehoshaphat feared when he heard that these armies had gathered against him, but he gathered all the people to pray and they asked God, said, aren't you our God? Aren't you the one that brought us out of Egypt with power and signs and wonders? And they got together. When we do that, uh, together, uh, corporately, the, the body of Christ prays and asks God, and they said, that we're not able to stand against this army, is what they, Jehoshaphat said. The people of Israel, they, they, so they asked God, and they were asking God, petitioning God, saying, Lord, we need you to intervene on our behalf. They asked corporately, they asked together, and they don't have the test, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit like we do. We have the baptism of the Holy Spirit living in us. You know, a good example of that is in, in Numbers 11, where where um, where God was, you know, the Israelites were complaining that because they didn't have any meat out there in the desert. Well, that, you know, that Moses got a little upset. He said, you know, Lord, did I beget all these people? Did I 
produce all these people that then he, God said that he would take, he said, get 70 people and bring them to me. He goes, and I will pour, get the, well, the spirit that's on you and put it on them. And so he did. And then, um, and then, and then uh, two of the guys, there were 70 that were supposed to meet and, you know, in the, in the temple at, well, at the, the te in the temple out there in the, in the desert, but they were supposed to meet and they stayed in the camp and they started prophesying because that spirit came upon them, but they were appointed. They were the part of the 70, but they didn't, I guess they were late or they didn't make it there. And what happened is that, that, that uh, somebody came and said, Hey, those two guys are prophesying in the camp, you know? And um, then even Joshua came up and said, Moses stopped and forbid them. He says, are you jealous on my behalf? He said, I wish to God that all of God's people would would be filled with the spirit and prophesy well that's what we have in the new testament we are the body of christ and we do have the the holy spirit and the whole body can prophesy the whole body can decree and declare the will and the plan and purpose of god it's not god's plan and will for uh russia to attack uh ukraine you know and russian soldiers maybe even christians in there uh get killed and you know, anybody get killed, that's not God's will. So if I, I believe, and I, and I want to pray in agreement with my Ukrainian brothers and sisters, and, and also the Russian, that this be stopped, because it's individuals, just, just individuals, you know, that are in leadership, that are yielding themselves to the devil, that are making these plans, and God can thwart these plans, and he will thwart these plans by the church, decreeing, declaring, petitioning God, not just begging God, but also proclaiming, releasing their authority, M M Matthew 16, 19, uh, what they're binding and them loosening, you know, uh, in the name of Jesus, you know, binding this, the powers behind this that are trying to cause, to kill stuff. You, you, what you can see is you can see two forces. You see the, the Ukrainian force and the Russian force, but there's a spirit behind the leadership. And, it, and you know, the, the leadership can be, and the Russian side is where they've yielded to the devil, let's attack, let's kill, let's, kill, let's take their land. That's nothing what the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And, 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 we, and the church can stop that by prayer, by faith. They, can, they, they need to believe these things. And so a lot of times people forget who's their helper, who is in them, which is the Holy Spirit. And if they get to recognize and acknowledge and know that, believe that, and decree and declare that, they can put a stop to this in the name of Jesus. I don't believe it's God's will that Russia attacks Ukraine and kills people and they some of their people get killed too. I don't believe that's God's will at all. It's God's will that they're, that God's peace and God's God's love be that the, 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 the gospel be preached. And one of the other points I wanted to make was that, what, uh, and, and the Lord showed me this years ago, uh, that, that he, uh, you know, if people, there's people that can continually yield themselves to the powers and principalities of the devil that trying to cause death and destruction, you know, that God will remove them. He's, you, you see it in the Old Testament. You see it, that God did that. You see it, uh, that God removed Herod in the New Testament, the, in the 12th uh, chapter of, of Acts, just because he was bragging about himself and didn't give God the glory. There was a new, there's a new, a new covenant. We have a better covenant established under better promises, it says in Hebrews. So we have, and that better covenant is better because of the Holy Spirit living in us. So all of, I'm saying all of this because we need to acknowledge what God has put in us, God's divine nature, and we also need to do it. And like, like I mentioned earlier, it's a test. It's a test for Ukraine, and God is using Ukraine internationally. Um, you know, everywhere I've gone to minister, it's Slavic churches in Germany, you know, and, and uh, you know, Ukraine and Russia, of course, and but it's revival is, is, is and the Lord showed us through prophetically years ago uh, in, the, in the 90s, Walter and I were there in Moscow and excuse me, that God was starting revival and, and the Lord was pointing out through Ukraine and it was spreading through Russia. And this is nothing but an attack of the principality and powers of the devil to stop the work of God. You know, I mean, you have Ukrainians here in the U.S ministering to, to American people. You have Ukrainians in Israel. When I go to Israel minister, there's, there's Ukrainians there ministering, taking the gospel, you know, and it's line by line, precept by precept, but it's the Holy Spirit helping them, using them and using them in a revival. And there is revival 
Revival's here and now. It's not going to be. It's here and now. We have to release it through faith, through words, through proclamations. And they can do that. The Ukrainians can do that. They get together in, in, their, in their town squares and, 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 and exercise, take authority over that devil. You know, and, that, and, I, and I still believe that the word that the Lord gave me, and I think it was 2007, that if that person, and everybody knows who that person is in Russia, if he continues to stop and try to hinder the work of God, he'll be removed out of the way. I, I don't care what anybody says or thinks about that. But just because it didn't happen when, I, when it was spoken, if he, can, if he stops, that the point was that the Lord spoke back in 2007 through a prophetic word was that if he hinders or tries to stop the work of God in the ministry of the Spirit, uh, you know, from where God was originating there, that move of God, he'll be removed out of the way. And I, and I, and I believe that the point is we have the Holy spirit, the authority, the dominion, the power, God's divine nature in us. And we need to, we need to acknowledge that and, and also, uh, speak with and through him, uh, the, the will and the plan of God, instead of the, the, allowing the devil to bring forth his plans. Amen. And let's do that right now, Brother Albert. And I know that there are many in Ukraine who are doing exactly what you are saying. They are uniting in prayer. They are binding uh, the spirits of darkness, demonic spirits that are coming against him. And I, uh, I'm glad that you brought out uh, something that many people just look at the political issues but um, in reality, what the devil is trying to do here is to stop the church, the right. revival that right. has come out and continues to come out of Ukraine from spreading and from continuing. And so it is not just a political thing, but the devil is using people in order to try to stop the move of God. But Jesus Christ said, I will build my church and Amen. the gates of hell Amen. will not prevail against it. And they will Amen. not. So, Brother Albert, <coughs> excuse me, would you pray right now? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come boldly before your throne of grace. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we are the habitation of God. It says in, in, in Ephesians 2.24, we are the habitation of God. You dwell in us. Your spirit dwells in us. And Lord, your spirit is leading, instructing, and, and, and revealing your will as we yield to him. He's revealing your will, your plan, your purposes, and Lord, your word also reveals that. So Lord, as the spirit leads us and guides us, we take authority over every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness in the name of Jesus that would try to come against Ukraine in Jesus' name, or that would try to come against other nations in Jesus' name. We bind the powers, the principalities behind it. We forbid you in the name of Jesus from attacking in Jesus' name. Lord, in Jesus' name, the persons who's or, or ordering this, the demonic power through that individual, they will be either submit to the will of God and the plan of God, or they will be removed in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have heard our prayers. You've heard our, our, our uh, because we are co-labors with you, Father, that you've heard our, our petition. You've also heard our, our proclamations against the enemy, against the principalities, against the powers, that they will be removed, caught, trying to cause this this war in the name of Jesus. We are the ones battling. We, the, your word tells us, even prophetic in the books of the prophets, that in the last days, it's those, Lord, who you who, who, who know their God, those who have a relationship with you, are able to decree and declare your will, which is your will is, the, is that all should come to the knowledge of salvation through Christ Jesus. Well, that's what we're proclaiming. And that in any attack from the enemy, we take authority over it. We bind it, cast it out of the way, bind, cast that spirit out of the persons in Jesus' name. And if they continue yielding to the devil, they will be removed themselves 
in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We have that authority in your name, in the name of Jesus. And it's not that we wish death on anyone. We wish that everyone would come to the knowledge of Jesus. But if people continue to yield themselves to the devil, God removes them. He's always done it, and he will continue doing it. He did it in the New Testament, too, as he did in the Old. So God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank you, Lord, that you will remove those hindrances, remove the principle you have removed the principalities through prayer through proclamation in the name of jesus and we decree this so on earth as it is in heaven your kingdom and your kingdom is a kingdom of love of salvation of deliverance and father we just release your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and in russia and in ukraine in jesus name and we thank you for it and believe you in jesus mighty name amen Amen. 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 And Father, we release your authority. And Lord God, we lift up the church in Ukraine. We pray for the church in Russia. We pray that they would not lose a unity in the spirit. And we pray that against any and every uh, demonic attack, try to divide the body of Jesus Christ putting one uh, brother against another. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, oh God, that they would all unite in prayer, binding the forces of Satan to to stop this uh, uh, war, this potential war in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we also lift up the church in Ukraine that uh, um, that they would not fall in fear, but that yeah. they would be strong in this hour as they seem to be, O oh God. But strengthen them even further, and Lord, uh, uh, show them the opportunities that exist within this time of trial and tribulation. Show them the opportunity to yeah. witness uh, to those who are seeking answers to those who are hopelessly uh, worried and and wondering what will happen. Lord, as they offer the message of salvation, hope through Jesus Christ to the hopeless. Lord, may many, many more come into the kingdom of God in that nation and likewise in Russia. And Lord, even among those soldiers on both sides, uh, well, on all sides, because there are many sides that they've come uh, on. Lord, we pray that you would move upon their hearts. Uh, Lord, some of them may uh, too may be in fear uh, of what may happen, uh, uh, fear of dying and so on. But Father, we pray that you would save their souls. We pray pray that you would change uh, their lives. We pray, oh God, for peace in this situation. And again, we bind that spirit that is coming to kill, to steal, and to destroy in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, you are bound. And Lord, your word says that what we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So we bind these principalities, these rulers of darkness that have set themselves up against God, against the will of God, against the church of God, against the uh, plans of God. And Lord, we declare the plans of the enemy null and void and of no effect in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, uh, we pray that the plans of the enemy would be subverted and destroyed, and he would cause confusion into the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, And even as Jehoshaphat was surrounded by the armies of five nations, and now Ukraine is surrounded on many sides, and yet uh, you have not left your people. And Lord, they can look to you, and as they do look to you. And we pray that not only church leaders will be looking to you, but we pray that their president and those in governmental authority in that nation, even within their military, that they would bow their knees before you and seek your will and seek your guidance, Lord, for we pray that they do not make erroneous decisions uh, that could be catastrophic. Father, we pray for the protection of your church, and at the same time that you would use your church in this situation. 
And Father, we pray that you peace would come to this situation right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for the church in Russia that they would not blindly uh, just go along without uh, uh, without yeah. praying, without uh, uh, speaking out uh, what is right and what is wrong. And Lord, we also come against uh, you know I, uh, the, the propaganda. I re, uh, yeah. as I recall. I, the, you know, church, your disciples praying and saying, look at their threats. And Lord God, there are many threats being, uh, they are being bombarded with uh, uh, threats 24-7 in Ukraine right now. But Lord, you hear, you hear those threats. But Lord, you have the final word. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind those lying spirits uh, of propaganda. We bind those uh, lying spirits that are causing fear in the minds of people yes. and lord we release your authority over that region in the name of jesus christ and we declare jesus christ yes. is lord over ukraine jesus christ is lord over russia jesus christ is lord over those surrounding nations in the name of jesus christ Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up your name, O holy God. For even as Jehoshaphat and his people, they began to lift up praises unto you. Lord, you sent ambushments amongst the enemy and they destroyed each other. But so, Lord, caused confusion to come into the camp of the enemy, caused confusion to come into Satan's plans and devices vices, and in the name of Jesus Christ, to dismantle them and what the devil intended for evil. We pray, oh God, that you would turn it around for a greater blessing to your people in this hour. And Lord, we pray for freedom for the church in Russia. Lord, yes. they have been under restriction. They have been under persecution. Father, we pray that you would give them freedom, not only in the spirit, but freedom within their nation to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout yeah. Russia, throughout the Crimean region. And Lord, even that separatist area, the eastern part of Ukraine, Lord, we pray for visitation of God, for there were many believers uh, there at one time, and there are believers there. But Lord, whatever remnant there is, there, strengthen them and use them in this hour them, Lord. in Jesus name in Jesus name and father we lift up um, uh, friends and pastors and bishops yeah. like Bishop Anatoly uh, very close to the uh, war line and Lord God in his church and the churches in that region of Donetsk uh, the church uh, in uh, churches in Kharkiv and in surrounding regions also very close to the to the mm -hmm. Russian border father we pray for your protection we pray for your anointing and we pray that you would remove every bit of human fear and fill them with your power fill them with your anointing of god and lord use them in this hour and likewise the church in poltava and the churches all over ukraine and zaporozhia and in her son and lord god we pray for the believers uh, and our friends there in Crimea, that you would bless them, that you would protect them, yeah. and that you would guide them in this difficult hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Brother Albert, maybe something else the Lord is leading that, you to. That propaganda, you know, the lies in Jesus' name, that the minds, we just pray, Father, and just decree, Lord, that you will open up our the minds, Lord, if our gospel is hid, it's hid to those whom the devil's blinding the minds, and either on both sides, in Ukraine, uh, in leadership, and also in Russia, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you that that you open up the, uh, the eyes of their understanding to know the gospel and to fear the authority and the dominion and the power of the gospel in Jesus' name, in leadership in Russia and leadership in Ukraine. Father God, that the Ukrainians would submit the leadership, would you submit to themselves to you, Lord, in Jesus' name, and seek you, and also those uh, in Russia, Lord, that the, the fear of God will come upon them, Lord, to not destroy their brethren. And Lord, I just pray, we just take authority, bind the powers of that lying spirit through propaganda. We decree in Jesus' name that angels even are listening to these 
proclamations and going forth and shutting down and exposing to the to the population of Russia the propaganda, the lies the, of the principalities and the powers, not flesh and blood, but the principality powers of the devil in that area in that country <clears throat> that are being manifested by the by those principality powers, the lies in the media, Lord, that the country of of Russia would see the lies, especially the body of Christ in Russia would see it and know that they're not dealing with flesh and blood. So in Jesus' name, that they would exercise their authority, their dominion in Jesus' name and stop it from their own country, from within, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just decree and prophesy <clears throat> by faith, Lord, that Russia in Jesus' name will hear a voice within. They will hear your voice within their own country. And Lord, they will pull back in Jesus' name. By faith, they will pull back in Jesus' name because of the fear of the Lord in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, because of the petition of your, of your people in Ukraine. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus, that we just decree there will be no war. <clears throat> the angels, warring angels are even going forth, hearkening unto the voice of this word, your will, your plan in Jesus' name. And we just agree that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for hearing these prayers. And Lord, we know that as we pray here on earth, there is agreement with us in heaven. And Lord, you've given us that authority to bind and to loose. And so we thank you that those things that we have bound are bound in the heavenlies in Jesus' name right now. In Amen. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the answer to prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing peace into the situation. And thank you, Lord, for that your angels are at work right yeah. now, even yeah. in this very moment, uh, yeah. changing the hearts, changing uh, the situations and moving the, as if it were, the chess pieces around and rearranging the situation in the name of Jesus yeah. right now. Yeah. In name Jesus' of. name, we declare it done in Jesus' name. Amen. From, within, from the ranks of the military, from the, even in the government. Lord, that they will they will uh, fear the Lord, fear what's what the consequences, and Lord, even they will put pressure on Putin in Jesus' name to stop this in the name of Jesus to stop it. That's that principality, that power that Putin is yielding to. He will, they will stop this in Jesus' name from within. In Jesus' name, Russia, this will be stopped in Jesus' name. Praise God. And likewise, Lord, we lift up Taiwan and the danger situation in, yes. um, in, uh, in ways similar to Ukraine. Yes. Um, with threats from uh, mainland China, uh, the communist uh, government of China. But Father, uh, you have a strong remnant there. You have a church there that is being used by you, not only in China, but in other parts of Asia and the world. And Father, we speak peace into that situation and we command the belligerent spirit to subside. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak protection over Taiwan and over Hong Kong, then over other regions there and nations there in Asia, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we speak revival in Indonesia, revival in China, revival in Nepal, in India, in uh, Myanmar. Oh, Father, in, uh, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Laos, Cambodia. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we send your word to Australia, New Zealand, in the South Pacific. Yes. Oh, yes. Father, they need a fresh move of God. Lord, move by your spirit and power. May your yes. church be filled with your spirit and arise boldly in this hour as never before. In the name of Jesus, in Australia, in New Zealand, in New Guinea, in the, uh, throughout Indonesia, throughout the thousands of islands of Indonesia, Lord, may your mighty rush in. Uh, blow again and move mightily again in the name of yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, Lord, we lift up Singapore. We lift up uh, Phil the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, we lift up uh, all the nations of that region. Yeah. And Father, we say your kingdom come. Your will be done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' yeah. name. And Lord, we pray for the protection of Taiwan. We pray for the protection of your church. Oh, Embolden your church to do even more for you 
in this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, I pray for the church in China. They are under persecution. In fact, in some areas under severe persecution. But Father God, will you embolden them despite the circumstances and use them, use them, oh God. Give them wisdom. Give them opportunities. Uh, show them the way, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, change that situation, Lord God. And bring not only revival, but may the bamboo curtain come down in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare freedom over that nation. In Jesus' name. And that change of government, Lord, we just decree and declare a change of government, Lord, in these countries where those who have yielded themselves to the devil in Jesus' name be removed out. And those who yield themselves to you and to your spirit, Father, will be moved in to, to take place in these governments in these countries. And revival will be released, Father, because people will be released to be able to believe and to seek your face, Lord, in Jesus' name. But every government, Lord, that's contrary in Russia and China, in Jesus' name, that is contrary to the gospel, that is trying to hide, that blind the minds, every power, principality, ruler of darkness, trying to blind the minds of the people against the gospel, in Jesus' name, to hide the gospel from them, in Jesus' name, you're bound and removed out of the way, in Jesus, you're bound and removed out of the way, especially in those that are in leadership, and we just loosen, Lord, faith and love and hope in, in the people, and also in those that are in government, Lord, in those countries, in Jesus' name, we loosen faith, love, and hope in them, in Jesus' name, and the knowledge of the gospel, we release the knowledge of the gospel, no weapon formed against Ukraine shall prosper, in the name of Jesus, and anyone that rises up against them in word through false propaganda and lies and of the devil in Jesus' name, we condemn those words against Ukraine, against Taiwan in Jesus' name, and against uh, even in Cuba, Lord, in Jesus' name. We condemn the words of those of those principalities and powers, Lord, and those that are in government, those demonic principal, principalities and powers in government, we condemn their words according to Isaiah 54, 17, and no weapon formed against your people shall prosper. No weapon formed against the country of Ukraine and Taiwan shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We decree this and declare it, Lord, as your authorities, as your ambassadors on this earth in the name of Jesus. And we just decree your kingdom. We loosen your kingdom in these countries in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And Father, we lift up Honduras. Uh, Lord yes. God, um, we pray that uh, the principalities and rulers of darkness that are lifting themselves <laughs> up again in that nation would be brought down, would be brought low. And Lord, we bind in the spirit realm the uh, uh, spirit of atheism and uh, yeah. the socialism and uh, the, the, the um, all that is associated with with that, that is anti-God and anti-church, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the church in Honduras at this hour. We pray for the missionaries there. We pray for the pastors, evangelists, uh, uh, leaders within that nation, that you would use them and embolden them to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and give people hope. Lord, some people are turning to the government as their solution, as their hope, but Lord, may they turn to you, for you are our only hope everywhere around the world. And so, Father, we pray that you would protect your church there. We come against every scheme of the devil to try to destroy that nation and nations of Central and in South America, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I find that spirit of Macumba that is arising again in Brazil, and this, yeah. uh, that spiritism and uh, uh, the atheism that has tried to lift up its head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, oh God, that for a reversal of that, we pray for fresh anointing upon the church in Brazil, and we pray, oh God, that you would move mightily in that nation yeah, yeah, in the true. name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Father, we lift up America and we declare that America shall be saved. Lord, yeah. many prayers have gone up and are going up and we believe that you have heard and are answering those prayers. 
And Lord God, even as uh, uh, <clears throat> even though we may look with our physical eyes and see a tumultuous situation and uh, changes uh, uh, that are not good, but Lord, we also are seeing the answer to prayer and we are seeing the rumblings, we are seeing the changes, we are seeing that you are working and you are rearranging. And so Father, we say your kingdom come, your will be done in the United States of America. America, Lord God, at every level of government, including yeah. the Supreme Court and, and that whatever decisions they make, that they would make godly decisions, just decisions based not only on the Constitution, but based on your word and Judeo-Christian principles that this nation was yes. founded on. And Lord God, we pray for every Supreme Court justice in this nation. Yeah. May Amen. they bow their knees before you and seek your guidance, yeah. your wisdom your direction, oh God. We pray yeah. for everyone uh, in this nation who is in the federal government, everyone who is in is, uh, power in state governments and local governments, that yeah. they would bow their knees before you and seek and your the guidance, the your direction, your wisdom, for we need your direction. We need your blessing, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we come against the agenda of the devil, try to confuse people about who they are, trying to confuse people about right and wrong, calling good evil and evil good. Father, yes, we yes. bind that lying spirit, that spirit of confusion, and that this spirit of deceit. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, open the eyes of the understanding of people, not just in government, but especially in churches, Lord, church leaders, Christians in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. You know, Walter, can I share something real quick? Yes, is, is that we, we need to re remember, you know, that when we, you know, people may be seeing us, you know, pray like this and the others pray like this, and maybe they may be praying like this, but to realize that there's a spiritual battle going on in the spirit realm, you know, uh, the forces of God against the demonic forces. And, and, it, and it's not one battle and it's over. You know, you continue exercising authority and dominion. And, and for example, like in this country, in America, what's going on here, uh, you know, we're not just dealing with, with individuals, like in, individuals in politics and individuals in corporate America. We're dealing with the principalities and the power behind it. And we need to realize that we need to stay vigilant. You know, we need to, it's, it's, a, it's a continuing battle. You don't, in a warfare, you don't just win one battle and the whole war is over. You continue battle until, until the war is completely over, and that's not going to happen until Christ comes back. So, but but in the meantime, we continually uh, need to take authority over the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, according to Ephesians chapter six, because things are changing. You know, the, the more we take authority, the more we release faith in what we're speaking, in our proclamations, faith in our authority and our dominion, the more we release faith in that. I mean, we can't just say it out of rope. We have to say it because we mean it. And and and, and whenever I pray something like that against the principal, I'm seeing them being bound. I'm seeing them in my mind while I'm praying, being cast out by the by the forces of God. And also, we see that happening, like I said, in this country. We see laws that the devil tried to pass to to uh the to, to to disturb the peace of the body of christ in this country is basically what it comes down to that's why it says in, in the in uh second uh, second timothy or first timothy chapter two it says to pray for those in authority well you know people outside when they when they read that they think well i'll pray i do pray for the president and those that are in authority i pray god bless them god bless them god bless you know you you need to realize how to pray for those in authority, because if they're yielding to the devil and the and laws are being passed are that are you know you know uh, against the body of Christ, because it says in that same chapter, it says that all might be well with you. Well, it's not well with us, with the body of Christ in this country or any country that's the, of the of the brethren that are watching. It's not well unless you take authority over the principalities and powers that are behind the leadership or trying to manipulate the leadership of your country to to create laws that will not benefit them. And, you know, like right now in Ukraine, Putin's the principality and power behind Putin, he's making law, he, he's making commands and demands and, and, and also those in agreement with him that are yielding to the devil. That's that's not going to be good for the people. 
it's not going to be good for the for the Russian people, and not and not only uh, for the church, but for the but especially for the church there. So they need to be in agreement with the church against these principalities and powers, not against flesh and blood, not against Putin because they love Putin or they don't love Putin. Christians there in that country, but it's it's against the devil that's going to make things bad for them individually. That's why we pray for those in authority that all may be well with us, is what it says in the scripture. So we need to, and we see that as we continue doing exercise of authority and dominion and binding and loosening uh, in, our, in our country, laws are starting to change. You see battles being won, battles being won. You know, as, as we continue praying, we need to stay vigilant because those devils will be cast out and then, then they, they try to regroup and try to come back again and try to change the laws that it's gonna, that's going to be detrimental to the body of Christ in this country, not only the body of Christ, but the whole country as a whole. As you can see in our country now, the inflation, the laws, and the, the, the what do you call them, the things that he signed, it's, it's detrimental to our country. Financially, it's detrimental to us, you know, and, and spiritually, in a lot of ways. So we need to stay vigilant and taking the authority and binding and loosening. We need to loosen the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We need to decree what we desire. God, what God's word says and desire that what God's word says to release that on, on, into our own countries. Every one of us watching those Christians in Ukraine, Russia, watching Israel, same thing. Uh, they need, we need to uh, uh, continue to stay vigilant and take an authority over the enemy because we are winning the battles because the greater one lives in us and we have overcome them. First John 4, 4 says, so God has given us authority. God has given us uh, uh, the victory, if, if we, if we release the victory, if we proclaim the victory, you know, people, I, I don't think people understand that, that we have to, we have to release it. We have to do something. This, this, whenever a country, like for example, in Ukraine right now, they're being tested. And when, it, when we're tested, God in all joy, the Bible says, because what, what happened when we're tested, when you and I individually are tested with sickness or, or circumstance coming against our finances or whatever, we need to know that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We need to exercise authority and dominion over him. When the devil's doing that, to exercise authority over the devil in Jesus' name, and, and you need to do something about it. If you just sit there and pray and ask God, and God says, I've already given you everything you need to, to, to overcome this, because that's why he calls us more than overcomers, because he's given us everything, the tools, the, the, the divine nature, the Holy Spirit, God's power, uh, to overcome the, the strategies and the works of the devil. So we need to continue doing that and, and, not, and not faint. We men ought to always faint. You know, Luke, what, 18, one says, men, Jesus said, men ought to always pray and not to faint. So we need to continue doing this and not faint, but to continue trusting God and believing God for, uh, for the victory that's already ours if we would release it, if we proclaim it. God will bring forth that victory in manifestation as we believe it and decree it and declare it. Praise God. So, so I want to encourage the, the body of Christ to continue exercise of authority, to continue believing that it's not just flesh and blood that you're dealing with. You're dealing against principalities and power. And it doesn't matter whether your country's uh, the one that's victorious over another country, that if they're trying to expand, you know, communism, for example, China, it doesn't matter if, the, like, say, China tries to expand into to to, to conquer Taiwan. It's not you're not just dealing flesh and blood, and you and you enjoy that because it's oh, our country bless our country. This no, you as the body of Christ, you're dealing with principalities and powers. Need to recognize and and, and realize that you are the ones that's going to cause peace, or 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 there's going to be a disturbance in your country through the principality and power of the devil that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You're the ones that are responsible to stand against it. This, this, it's a spiritual battle above the natural, and you, we need to recognize it and to not forget that. And Brother Albert, I think that one of the things that uh, we could observe from these situations, for example, Taiwan, China, it seems impossible uh, to resist such a huge foe um, or Ukraine, Russia, um, yet uh, um, it, or other, but you know, it's not just these uh, conflicts. We look at situations like you were talking about this country. So those things may look impossible, yet with God, all things are possible. And we touched on Jehoshaphat and 
in that situation, they're totally impossible for them to go and fight. They were not in a position to go to battle, number one. Number right. two, they were surrounded by armies of five nations. Yes. Um, and so uh, in the natural, it was a totally impossible situation. And I think that is uh, another lesson for us, yes. not yes. to look at things just in the natural, right. but to pray in the spirit and to observe things in the spirit, because with God, all things are possible. Um, in the natural, yes, uh, many things are impossible, but God uh, with God, all things are possible. Right. So uh, um, it's it's a uh, it's interesting because uh, we're seeing something, and you know the commentary is on the physical realm, and so many soldiers here, and so many soldiers here, and so many tanks and and missiles and what have you. But right. uh, uh, but the thing is that what is happening in the physical realm, there is a spiritual parallel. Right. And uh, when uh, we only read and hear about or see uh, information on uh, the news media about the physical realm, they never touch on and will never explain to you what we're explaining to you, which is yeah. there is the spiritual dimension. And that is where we wage war in the spiritual dimension, where so that the minds of people would change, the hearts of people would change, and they would act differently. And when we pray, God changes situations. And like Brother Albert said, yes, uh, we uh, we think one battle and it's over. That's only on in movies where you know everything gets wrapped up in in one hour or whatever. How long you know the battle's over and everybody's happy and everybody went home. But uh, the reality is there is a battle after a battle until Jesus Christ returns. Uh, but God wants us to occupy. Jesus began the work. But he commanded us to continue the work of preaching the gospel, of reaching the nations. And in order to do that, we need the freedom to be able to preach the gospel. And so wherever you see uh, governmental restrictions on the preaching of the gospel, they are hindering the expansion of the kingdom of God. And that definitely is not God's will. And yeah. as Brother Albert said, don't just pray these prayers, God bless this one or God bless that one. What are they doing? Are you blessing the, the bad things they are doing or pray for pray for them that they would have a proper heart uh, uh outlook on, uh and and that they would submit to god that they would have a good a, a proper understanding and that they would do the right things uh, because we can be influenced by good or by evil by the spirit of god or by demonic spirits and unfortunately People will yield to demonic influences. It's not like the devil comes with in a red suit and horns, says, hello, I'm the devil, go do this. No, he'll plant thoughts in people's minds, and, and then he'll develop those thoughts, the, if they allow it, in their minds, and the schemes uh, uh, may be very diabolical. But you may recall that Jesus even rebuked Peter, one of his closest disciples and he says satan get oh get behind me it, peter wasn't satan but he yielded to right. satan in that moment even though he was jesus one of his closest disciples yet he had yielded so what am i trying to say is that people can yield to demonic influences. And right. Peter thought he was doing a good thing, you know, uh, he's going to protect Jesus, but he was actually going contrary to God's plan. Jesus needed to go to the cross. He had to go there. Otherwise, we would not have salvation. And so uh, it's very important that we understand this and uh, not just pray these little uh, uh, prayers, oh, God bless this one, God bless uh, uh, you know, the governor or, or the mayor or whatever. Yes, uh, right. that's fine, but, uh, but God wants to, uh, us to pray correctly. We need right. to pray. Isn't that what you were saying, Brother Albert? Exactly. I mean, you, we, you know, Matthew 16, 19, you know, uh, be, like you were you know, mentioning there, Peter, uh, Peter, Jesus was asking, who do men say that I am? And he, Peter, 
some of this, he said, Peter said, some are saying this, some are saying that, you know, you're the prophet, you're this, you're that. <clears throat> but Jesus said, who do you say that I am? You know, and that's, that's, uh, and then when G then G Jesus asked Peter that, he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. So God was revealing that. God was, the Holy Spirit was revealing things to Peter. But then right out, and, and then P Jesus made the statement when Peter said that, he says, uh, he says, the gates of hell, and, and I really like when you mentioned that earlier, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He says he was going to build the church on that, on that fact that, that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. He was going to build his church upon that. You know, he, he says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We need to, we need to get that mindset that the gates of hell cannot and will not prevail against the church, against the church, the body of Christ. If we pray right, it, you know, it's, it's like this, you know, we have weapons of our warfare, the scripture says, you know, uh, and they're not carnal. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4, the weapons that we have are not, they're not carnal, but it's, first of all, knowledge. If, first of all, it's the word of God, that knowledge of that word, knowledge, the word of God gives us knowledge of the weapons that we do have. What, what kind of weapons, brother Albert? Well, we have, we have the, first of all, the word of God, the sword of the spirit. We have, uh, the name of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit, God's nature, God's power, God's love, God's divine power and nature in us. We have those weapons. They're not carnal. They're spiritual, but we have to release those things by faith into this physical realm to change this physical realm. We have to, we change the physical realm by the spiritual realm in the kingdom of God, which is a spiritual kingdom. We release that. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it, uh, uh, Jesus said. Uh, and that's a that's a good mindset we need to get. And like you said, like I, I was sharing and you were sharing that um, uh, if we know how to pray, you know, like you said, they can't just pray these little wimpy prayers saying, God bless this, this, our president, bless this person, you know, give them wisdom, Lord, please. You can't just pray like that. You've got to realize there's a, there's a war for going on for their minds. It's a, that's a battle for their minds with imaginations and lies of the devil for their in their minds of conquering of, of of making themselves great of pride the devil's full of pride and he'll try to put pride in these leaders of these countries you know and we have to take authority over that that's how you pray for your leaders that's how you pray for those in authority you bind if the laws are being changed in this in this not well with you read that chapter in second first timothy chapter two of uh, those in authority praying for them if it's not going well for you then you need to start praying with knowledge and understanding of how to pray, binding that devil that's manifesting through your leader, through your president, through your uh, whatever, your communist leader, whatever. You need to take authority over that because it's not, it's not God doing this to you. It's the devil trying to kill, steal, and destroy you, even though you're under the, the influence of that power or uh, you know, in that country, let's say, for, China, for example, China and the communists. You know, you're under the influence of that power, and that, that power especially if you're a believer in China, you know, you can't be proud of that because of that leadership, because that's, that's contradictory to the word of God. It's contradictory to you as a believer in China. You can't say, well, I'm so proud of our president. You know, he's, he's conquered this. He wants to take over Taiwan. That's more land for us. No, you, you have to take authority over it because it's in, in, in the devil through that, that communist spirit is going to try to kill, steal and destroy human beings god's people to overtake and to conquer so um, i mean you can't be proud of that you can't be proud of oh i like putin because he's our president oh he's strong no you better realize that if he tries to kill other innocent people you guys are responsible for it. you the body of christ in that country are responsible to pray against that 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 devil that's trying to overtake. We do that in here in America. We, the Christians in America, we don't start saying, oh, I love Trump uh, because he's strong. Is this, that? Well, if he's killing, doing things that are contrary to the word of God, no, we're going to pray against that. We're going to take authority over that spirit that's trying to manipulate him and pray that God give him the spirit of wisdom and revelation, knowledge, and understanding. Not, not pray, oh, I'm so proud of him. Oh, we're, we're beating everybody. Everybody's afraid of us. We're not we don't believe that way in this country as believers. Hopefully, most Christians don't. Well, some Christians do believe that way, but some some of us, the the the, the ones that have knowledge of what God says, is we don't believe that way. We pray contrary to that spirit that's trying to manipulate through our leaders. 
And, and that's the way uh, Christians in those in Russia, in Ukraine, in China, they all, Cuba, they all need to pray against that. They can't be proud of that devil that's trying to manipulate your country and overtake other countries. You can't be proud of that. You gotta, you gotta believe God. If you want to take over country, take them over for Jesus. You know, don't pray, pray that way. Loosen that, bind and loose. The gates of hell can't prevail against that. You, you have to bind and loose, bind and loose, and you, and the, the gates of hell cannot and will not prevail against that. That's right. That's right, brother Albert. Uh, very well said, and I think that, uh, and I hope that this has given a better clarity to people in knowing how to pray. And uh, it's not just one nation over another; it's in every nation. And uh, whether it's America or Canada or right. Mexico or Honduras or Cuba or China or Russia or Ukraine, we need to know how to pray, and we need to pray a. Accordingly, and, um, and and that is so uh, important. And maybe uh, uh, I, maybe you've got uh, your feathers ruffled a little bit because of the way Brother Albert explained that. But maybe that's good because you Absolutely. need to see things as they are. We all do. And um, and and uh, when it, it's all said and done, we are in reality. I mean, we need to be good citizens of the countries that we live in. But in reality, the bottom line is we as believers, as the Church of Jesus Christ, we are citizens of heaven. And our awesome. eternal home is not going to be here. It's going to be with the Lord. And so um, we need to, that doesn't mean that we shirk our responsibilities and don't do that. But while we are here, we need to win as many souls as we can for Jesus. We need to populate the kingdom of God and depopulate the kingdom of Satan. That is the goal of the church, Amen. the evangelization of the world. And when things hinder that, we pray against that. When things are good for that, then we bless that. So, uh, you Amen. know, we need to take the right position and see things as God would like them to be, uh, not just uh, half-hassedly say, well, you know, God permitted, so it must be God's will. Wait a minute. We yeah. are here on earth, and we have a certain authority in Jesus Christ, and maybe you don't like us saying this, but we do have authority in Jesus Christ to bind and to loose Amen. And there are there we are engaged in a spiritual battle, and we need to continually be standing, as the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter six, with the armor of God, not just standing and watching things go down, but fighting the good fight of faith and continuing to be on guard so that we are not fooled uh, and deceived by the schemes of the devil. And there are many schemes of the devil. But yeah. if we're not, we don't know God's word, we don't know God's will, we sometimes will be thanking God for what the devil is doing. Please don't do that. Uh, Amen. Be careful what you're doing. Uh, you know, not everything is from God. <laughs> the devil's out there killing, stealing, right. and destroying. So don't say, well, God is God, must be God. So, no, um, you know, we have power, we have authority in Jesus. We need to exercise that power. We need to pray, and we need to pray strongly and not just. You know, uh, like we said, uh, the simple little prayers of God bless my country, but pray uh, against the influence of satanic spirits. And I don't Amen. care what country it is. That includes this country as well. Right. Amen. Amen. I totally agree with that, Walter. That's an excellent uh, statement you made there. Uh, we, we, just, we just need to realize you know, uh, the pride, you know, come on. Some, there's like lots of time national pride for, oh, we're so proud of um, Trump when Trump was here. Yeah, I, I like some of the things he did, but there's some things he didn't, I didn't like. You know, but if, if it's contrary to the word of God is what I look for in our leadership. If it's contrary to the word of God that they're trying to push and pass through laws in America or in our country, we need to take authority over that. All the Christians in this country should have knowledge of that, and they don't. And this is why God says in Hosea 4, 6, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't know what the word of God says, what the will of God says, what the will of God is through, the, through his word, then, of course, you're going to suffer. And you're going to go through circumstances and problems. And you're going to be tested, tried. And God, you know what, sometimes I, I, I know and believe, 
and you, you see it throughout the Old Testament is that Israel was attacked is because they got away from God. They got away from the knowledge of God. And when they got away from God and started serving other gods and other things and in pride, then, of course, God says, OK, my hands off of you. The enemy's going to come in. He's going to going to defeat you and all kinds of bad things happen. They're being tested. They were being tested. They were God was shaking them to say, snap out of it. Get back to where you know you're supposed to be with me in relationship with me, communion with me, knowledge of me. And then I will give you peace. I will give you victory over your enemies. But if not, then, of course, this is why, like I said, the countries get tested. Countries get tried. Individually, we get tested. We get tried. But whenever we get tested or tried, it's so that God set, shakes us and says, come on, use your weapons. You know, speak, stand against it. Overcome it. My grace is sufficient. Paul was being in the, in, in the, in the in, in Corinthians. Paul was telling the Corinthians, he said that, that he got tired of being beat. He got tired of being in, in stocks and got tired of being stoned to death. He got tired of being in the ocean. He said, Lord, please take these from me. That sounds like a lot of the Christians in this, these countries. Lord, help us. We, You know, you do something. But yet God gives everything to, to do something about it for our, in, in, in him and through his word and through our prayers of authority and dominion and proclamations. He gives authority to do something about it. But, you know, it, 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 like I said, God's what I was going to say is God's grace, which is God's power. In any circumstance, any test, or any trial is sufficient for us to overcome it. If if we believe that, that's the thing. And if we release faith in what what we pray and proclamations against these powers and principles, you know the devil. The, you know you know a good example of this is 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 in the uh, Acts nineteen, <clears throat> the seven sons of Sceva. You know the the these here's what guys like religious guys maybe this was trying to cast out devils. You know. Uh, they were trying to cast out the devils of, of this one man. And it says that, uh, me, you know, they were, they were exorcists, you know, so obviously they had a little bit of religious attitude, mentality, and they were trying to cast the devil out. And what did the devil do when they tried to so say, we cast you out in the name of Paul, you know, uh, in the name that Paul, because Paul obviously was casting out devils and they were obeying, you know? So then he said, we cast you out in the name that Paul's preaching that guy, Jesus, you know, well, they didn't know Jesus. They had no knowledge of Jesus, no knowledge of God's will and God's plan. You know, so so the devil says, yeah, okay, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You know, who are you? And that's what if these Christians that lack the knowledge of who they are in Christ and the authority and dominion they have, that's what the devil says when they pray, you know, and try to pray against against for their countries or stuff. Like the devil says, yo, Jesus I know, you know, and this person I know, and that person I know, but who are you? You know, are you, you know, they, the devils, the principalities, the devils, they know when you know who you are in Christ, when you're releasing faith in your proclamations, your authority, your dominion, when you release faith, in it, they know that they know that if you're trying to say it in a little whippy prayer, you know, begging God to do something and God's already given you the authority over all the power of the devil, Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall my enemies hurt you. If you're not saying nothing, doing nothing, uh, uh, proclaim it in faith, believing that, releasing that faith. Then, of course, the devil's going <laughs> to that's funny. Yeah, say that again. You know, the devil's going to look at you and laugh, just like he did with the seven sons of Sceva. You know, who are you? Well, you go, Jesus, I know. And, and, you know, I know Brother Walter and I know Brother Albert. You know, and I know they, they scare me. But who are you? You know, I don't know. I can't. You're not believing what you're saying. You're not believing the prayer of authority that you're releasing. So who are you? And that's that's what we have to take down. And I'm not bragging about us. You know, I'm just saying. We, we, I believe when I pray something like this, I, like I said, I, when I close my eyes, I'm seeing the, I see mighty warring angels binding, you know, wrapping them up and tossing them out of the, into outer darkness or whatever, these principalities of power, casting them down. I believe I see that I, when I'm pro proclaiming this, I'm releasing faith in it. I'm seeing it in my, in my hoper, which is your imagination. I'm releasing the power of God to, to to bring revival stuff i'm seeing this and just because it doesn't happen immediately does not mean it's not happening it's happening as i see it as i'm hoping and faith my faith my faith your faith everyone watching's faith is giving substance to that if they believe that and release that that their faith through their words death and to the death or life in their words and like i said if you're not saying it in faith believing uh, the devil's going to look at you, laugh at you, saying, ha, 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 that's very funny, very, real cute. 
we need to know God's word and we need to know who we are in Jesus Christ. And that's why um, it was very important that if you missed uh, part of the beginning of this broadcast, you go by, back and, and rewatch it. We've gone into overtime. We do need to wrap up here, but I think it's been very good. And before we close, we do want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your savior if you're not saved. And uh, we want to pray for those who are sick and afflicted. There are many people uh, still writing in with uh, uh, issues with COVID and uh, many testimonies. People have uh, gotten much better. Some are completely well. And now we're praying for those that are still dealing with that uh, in other issues. It's not just COVID. There are sicknesses, diseases out there. And uh, um, uh, Brother Albert, would you pray for those needs? And then I'll lead the people in prayer for salvation. But pray for those Amen. as the Lord leads you. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the authority, the power you've given us. We thank you for the, the life, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus who is in us. We thank you. As, as the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set up them us free and them people are watching set us free from the law of sin and death you know death is sickness disease poverty that's all death you know so father the law of the spirit of life we release it upon those watching in the name of Jesus we bind any spirits of infirmity in the name of Jesus we take authority over the cast of cancers tumors uh, in the name of Jesus we loosen the law of the spirit of life the Holy Spirit, the power of the word of God, the name of Jesus to set you free and make you every bit whole from any sickness, cancers, diseases, for he delivered us from all our diseases. He took all our infirmities, he bore all our sicknesses and by his stripes, we were healed. So we loosen healing, be healed in Jesus name. Those of you watching, those of you by your faith, especially the believers, those of you watching by your faith, receive that. In the name of Jesus, receive the word of God. I just spoke the word of God. That word itself should heal you, make you whole. And my faith mixed with your faith will quicken, the Holy Spirit will quicken your mortal body. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Everybody was touching Jesus when he was walking in the crowd because they obviously knew that he laid hands on people, they got healed. But everybody's touching, nothing happening. But that woman, her, Jesus said, your faith made you whole. She had to release faith to receive. And the faith activated the Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus. It flow out of him into her body and healed her. Even so, through our, our words, our faith mixed with God's word that we're speaking to, praying for you, will activate by your faith receiving it. You have to, by faith, receive that healing in Jesus, be made whole. And, I'm, and I speak to those who are going through uh, COVID or, 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 or any kind of uh, virus or sickness in Jesus' name, you are healed. You, you will overcome it. You're not maybe going to go over it. You will overcome it. I overcame it. I, we got healed in Jesus' name. We, and I've been healed of a lot of different things because it tested me. The Lord allowed it to test me to use my faith to use his word to overcome and to be healed by it. So in Jesus' name, you are made whole, you're healed, you're, you will overcome it. If you're going through it now, you will overcome it and you will be made completely well and completely healed in Jesus' name because he already healed you by his stripes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive your healing right now. The anointing of God is going forth. It is touching you right now, whether it's paralysis, whether it's a pain in the knee or a broken knee, a damaged knee, receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Eyesight. Yes, someone's eyesight is being touched right now. Amen. Someone's feet are being touched right now. Someone's ear is coming unstopped. Receive your healing right now. Oh, the anointing of God is flowing. The power of God is right. touching you right now. Right. Receive that healing right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Cancer, leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank virus, you. every trace of that diabolical yeah. virus, come You're out of your healed. body you in healed. Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Lord, for healing the lungs, the heart, the yes. brain, oh God, the stomach, the, oh Lord, uh, in Thank Jesus' you. name, the liver, Amen. oh God, in Jesus' name, Amen. in Jesus' name. I, I just sense God to healing somebody's feet, to just receive. Receive your healing right now. Somebody's sight. Uh, I don't know what the problem is, but I, I, God is touching you right now. And Amen. an ear is being healed right now in the name of Jesus brain, Christ. Brain cancer. I feel very strongly. Brain cancer. A brain tumor. In Jesus. 
name. In Jesus' You're name. Beautiful. And Lord, as, as Brother Albert uh, uh, is sensing that, uh, we lift up uh, Pastor Josh Christmas, uh, son of uh, uh, Kent Christmas. Lord, we send your word and we command that brain aneurysm to be it's gone and healing to come forth in his brain, in his body. Lord, may your resurrection power flow into his body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Thank you for doing that, Lord. Amen. Maybe Amen. some of you are just wondering, what in the world are we talking about? What are we basing this on? Well, 2 Corinthians, which we're referring to, 2 Corinthians 10, verse, uh, uh, starting with verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not physical, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We need to do that, and that's what we are doing on this broadcast. If you have not received Jesus as your Savior yet, open your heart right now and say, Dear Lord, I admit I'm a sinner. I received Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord, as my Savior. I repent of all of my sins. I renounce all the work of Satan in my life. Set me free, Lord Jesus. Wash me with your blood. I receive you into my heart and into my life in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, Jesus has come into your heart. Talk to him every day. We call it prayer. Converse with him. Talk to him in your own words. Allow him also to speak to you. By reading his word, the Bible, don't know where to start, go to the New Testament. And I suggest the fourth book in the New Testament is a good place to start, the gospel according to St. John. And uh, tell others that you are now a follower of Jesus and find a Bible-believing group, a Bible-believing church where you can be grounded, where you can grow in your newfound faith. If you don't know one near you, write us. We'll try to locate one in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Um, uh, Brother Albert, uh, uh, thank you so much for being on here. Uh, thank you all who have tuned in. And if you tune in late, uh, go back and watch from the beginning. Uh, I lost my Facebook feed, so I have not uh, seen, uh, have been able to track the comments or any prayer requests that may have come in during the broadcast. But let me assure you that we are praying for you and uh, we are believing God uh, to touch you, to heal you, to save you, to intervene in your life. Just yield to him and he will work in your life. Um, Brother Albert, thank you again for being on here uh, this Thursday and most Thursdays. And tomorrow we have a Spanish broadcast and we have a guest pastor from Edmonton, Alberta, Pastor uh, Castillo, uh, Orlando Castillo from, uh, from Edmonton, Alberta will be uh, on here tomorrow. Um, on Saturday morning, if you get up early at 6.15 in the morning, I will be speaking in Nepal to leaders there. So it'll be in English and Nepali. Uh, we'll try to transmit it live here if we get a decent feed. And then on Sunday, Nina and I will be ministering at Christians of Evangelical Faith in San Mateo, California. If you are in the Bay Area, we'd love to see you in person. That service is at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, their address, uh, I don't remember the street number, I think it's 309, but it's on uh, West 37th Avenue in San Mateo. Look up Christians of Evangelical Faith or just look at my announcement on my um, uh, Facebook uh, profile. You'll be able to see that address. We'd love to see you there. We'll be ministering there and we'd love to see you in person. And on Monday, we have Dr. Daryl Peregrim on here again with us. He will be, uh, we will be praying for Ukraine. We'll be praying for Canada 
and of course for your needs. On Tuesday, we have a Russian broadcast. On Wednesday, Tony March Abram will be with us. On next Thursday, we'll have Brother Albert again with us. And next Friday, we hope to have a pastor of a great church in Brazil, uh, the son-in-law of the uh, world-renowned Carlos Anacondia, um, uh, on here on the broadcast, God permitting. And uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that one in Spanish. We may have to go to Portuguese uh, since he is from Brazil. But that's not a problem for me. But I think our Spanish-speaking people will somewhat understand, hopefully, the, uh, the Portuguese. But thank you for joining us. Pray for us. Pray for Brother Albert, his ministry, his family. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever.